This is how you can sharpen your edges with bevels and preserve your topology at the same time. So how do you sharpen these edges which are under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier without completely fucking up your topology, without causing shading issues, without causing artifacts and anything like that? Here's the right way to do this. And I got this question from a student inside the Digitally Enhanced Club. I've sort of recreated his situation or a simple version of his situation so I can demonstrate to you what's going on and how can you do this correctly, all right? So what he was trying to do is select the edges on the inside of an object sort of like this because he wants to sharpen these edges. They're under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. So his idea was to try and bevel these, but the problem is when you bevel them, you get this shitty intersection between these two edges and that's no good. That causes all sorts of problems. So he tried to also select these edges down here or perhaps even these out here because that sort of creates a nicer intersection between these two edge loops. And that kind of works a little bit better, but the problem is that now you got this fold down here, so now he's battling with getting rid of this fold. So how do you do this without any of these issues? Well, the first thing you have to keep in mind is you don't want to select any edges around here or anything like that. You only want to select these edges. You're first going to have to modify your bevel a little bit. So you're going to do Control b and you're going to create your bevel as large as you need it to be. And when you apply the bevel, you're going to open up the bevel menu down here. You have to have two segments and a shape value of one. And then the most important thing, you're, you have to set the miter outer here. You have to change that from sharp to arc. And that's just going to change the way your geometry is arranged on these little intersections. Now, this is still not good enough because now we got an end gone here and this is still causing us all sorts of shading issues. And obviously this is no good. You can see why it's no good if you apply your subdivision surface modifier. It's a fucking abomination. Okay, so we can't have this either. So one way to sort of make this better is to take these two vertices right here and join them with J because now you just have two quads and now this is a nicely flowing face loop over here. So if you connect this like this, the topology is a lot cleaner and a lot, a lot more organized. So this now follows the principles that I explained to you guys in the previous video. If you try to go get a job at a studio, they're going to test your topology. They want to see how your loops are flowing. They want to see your geometric consistency, okay? They're going to check for this type of shit. So this now passes the test because your loops are a lot cleaner than they were without this little connection here. However, the problem here is that if you look at this model, you can still see sort of pinching over here on the side, especially if you have a smaller bevel. Now, this is a pretty large bevel, but if you have a smaller bevel and you do this, you can see this sort of pinching and shading artifacts and it still doesn't work too well. Especially if you look at this from the top view, you can kind of see a big deformation over here and it just doesn't work the way that you would want this to work. So I'm going to show you a better way to do this. The right way to do this so you wouldn't have this pinching shit is you need more geometry. And let me show you why and how you can do that. Now, in this type of situation, one way to add more geometry, there's a few ways to do it. OK, one way to add more geometry is to just sharpen all the sharp edges or, or all the edges which are supposed to be sharpened first. Let's say with uh, we're going to select all the angles like this and we're going to set the mean crease to one. And then we're just going to apply one or two levels of subdivision surface so we would get more geometry. But I wouldn't recommend this method because when you do this with your mean creases to keep these edges sharp so that now you can subdivide them again and remove the creases, it sort of makes this part here a little bit pointy. And that's no good because now you would have to go using your 3D cursor to manually align all these edge loops here again sort of like this and then that would take forever because now you got to do it in every corner so this is sort of a pain in the ass you don't want to do nothing like this in this kind of situation what i'm going to do instead is i'm just going to recreate the entire object and this is why when you're working topology you got to keep this kind of shit in mind before you start working you got to sort of plan for things because the last thing you want is you created an entire very sophisticated object and just to realize that none of this is any good because now you got to bevel it and you can't do it. So now you got to redo everything. This is why you got to keep this shit in mind before you start working. You got to make a little game plan before you start modeling something. So luckily, this is a very simple situation, which I can very easily recreate by just taking a cube, applying some uh, mean creases at the top and the bottom, subdividing it, let's say three or four levels of subdivision, just to show you my point here. And then we're going to take some more geometry from the top like this Four, it was a little bit too much subdivision, but you guys will get the idea. I'm going to extrude this up and I'm going to try to maintain my geometric consistency. So I'm going to try to scale this down a little bit. I want to have squares everywhere. We're going to remove our mean creases. And now when you try to subdivide this, it's already much cleaner. But let's say you still want to bevel these edges over here like this on the inside, or let's just bevel all the sharp edges. Now we're going to bevel this with control B like this. 
And now when we join this here with JR, geometry allows this edge here to be much shorter. So if you look at this now from top view, remember how far it was sticking out before? It's just not sticking out that far because we have more geometry, which allows everything to be smoother. Now, I already hear somebody in the comments, with, without fail, guys, every time I make a topology video, there's always some smart ass in the comments. And I don't understand how people genuinely get upset about this. I, I don't understand what, what's the matter with you people. Don't you understand that by getting mad and get started to argue with me in the comments, you were just boosting my video. So by all means, please go ahead. But for some reason, people refuse to understand that I'm not talking about fucking game models here. I'm talking about topology. I'm talking about if you want to get a job with, let's say, an advertising studio, you're going to have to show these kind of skills. And they're not worried about the number of polygons that you have on your model. So in this case, if you want to have good topology, it's okay to have more polygons. And this is not optimal for game engine. You're right. This is not the point. The point of this type of modeling is not for you to create a low poly object, which performs well in a game engine. Although if you want to have a high level position for that type of stuff, you probably have to show really good topology skills as well, because topology skills are sort of like the ultimate evaluation, the ultimate test for a 3D modeling artist's abilities, all right? Even if you're not going to need it necessarily, you're going to have to be able to do it. It's like, you know, when you're studying mathematics or something, you're doing, you got to do all this crazy shit, like, I don't know, calculus or something, even if you're going to enter a field which, where this is completely irrelevant, you still got to be able to get through this shit because this is like, it's just something that everybody has to go through. It's like if you're writing a book, you got to capitalize your letters. You're still going to understand what it says if you don't have capital letters, but you look like an idiot, okay? So you got to be able to show these skills if you want people to take you seriously in the industry. This is why I'm t telling you guys about topologies. Don't be telling me about high polygon counts. Anyway, let me know what you want to see next. If you need some help with your, if you want to do a video quest, a video request, or if you need some help with your model, you want me to check out your situation, then check out my Patreon and also check out a Blender School. We're going to teach you everything you need to know to become a professional 3D artist. So let me know in the comments what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.